Dear Ross, once again it's Christmas, and once again I find myself on the lam. Any advice on keeping Christmas in my heart while keeping one step ahead of the law? Signed, I fought the Yule Log and the Yule Log won. Dear Yule, on the lam? Like wearing fedoras, dodging G-men, crashing in flop houses, and using words like copper and doll face, hopping freight trains and passing bad checks? Which reminds me, I have to call my mom. Log man, you are a Christmas miracle waiting to happen. Just bide your time, and you'll cross paths with an adorable orphan who will let you into her heart, and after some shenanigans and hijinks, she into yours. Undoubtedly, the straight-laced but comely woman who runs the orphanage will prove to be soft-hearted as she ultimately provides an alibi when the law catches up to you. This will be followed by a proposal, an adoption of the adorable orphan, and the best Christmas ever. Hopefully the fact that you still have a wife and family in Arkansas won't catch up to you at least until mid-January. Dear Ross, I'm tired of turkey at Christmas. So much preparation, so much time, such a big carcass, and it's really just chicken with tang. Where, pray tell, is the microwavable turkey? Why is science wasting time on iPad apps when they should be focusing on how to flash cook a 20-pound bird? Throw me a bone and tell me I can take a pass on the turkey. Sincerely, marching to a different drumstick. Dear Drummy, No, 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 you can never not have turkey. That would be catastrophic. The Christmas and Thanksgiving holidays are the only means of preventing explosive turkey population growth. Without these holiday feasts, why, we'd be sky high in thighs. It would be gobblegeddon. In fact, during the Great Salmonella Scare of 1991, the demand for turkey plummeted by 60%. The resulting turkey spike caused factory farms to be overrun. Before long, the turkeys rebelled against their keepers and began to organize. Sadly for the turkeys, their organizational paradigm consisted of repeatedly running headfirst into the fences and learning to moo like a cow in hopes of obtaining safe refuge. Turkeys aren't that smart. Still, every time we go vegetarian at Christmas, the turkeys win. Really, the only way to avoid having turkey at Christmas is to move to a country where turkey is not part of the traditional festive meal. For example, Iceland, where one of the favorite Christmas dishes is reindeer. And that's why the children in Iceland are the saddest children in the world. Dear Ross, have you ever noticed that many so-called Christmas songs have nothing to do with Christmas? Jingle Bells, Winter Wonderland, Let It Snow, Sleigh Ride, they're really about winter. Isn't it a shame that we don't sing these songs all winter long? Cheerfully yours, Chester Roasting by an Open Fire. Dear Chestnut, absolutely not. Singing Christmas songs after December 26th is a violation of the Geneva Convention on Crimes Against Humanity. Besides, the songs you mention actually do have verses pertaining to Christmas. They're just not often sung. For example, Sleigh Ride contains this verse. We're having Christmas dinner at Great Aunt Bertha's tonight. We'll open lots of presents while we watch Uncle Buster get tight. Oh, there'll be children singing and couples swinging, of course. It would be much more pleasant if we all didn't smell like wet horse. Dear Ross, what is the ultimate holiday gift? Signed, Gary Christmas. Dear Gare, peace on earth, goodwill to all people. And barring that, a 52-inch flat-screen TV.